We are live. Hello, welcome everyone. We are live and we are ready for another episode of Real Talk. Today, my guest, I'm going to mute my channel. Hold on real quick. I forgot to do that. See, I knew it. Let's see if let's see what mine's doing right now too. See if I yeah, make uh, sure that your channels are muted. It's muted. <laughs> Everyone, today's guests are Rick and Brooke, and they are going on their first year of their wedding anniversary. I, Yay. I am so honored to have both of you here with me today. I do want to tell my followers that I had the pleasure of watching Brooke and Rick get married as they broadcasted it live here on YouTube last May. Yay. Yeah, it was fun. Um, that was a uh, broadcasting was interesting because we, um, uh, I went to set it up and I had my laptop, the laptop and the webcam set up on like a, 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 on a little table. <laughs> and I went to use the Wi-Fi from the coffee shop and it wasn't fast enough. Oh. So I had to hotspot my phone literally right before the wedding and hotspot my phone, and then connect to the hotspot on the phone and then get the camera pointed the right direction and get a get a 12 year old 12 year old girl to run it. Sister. She did a great job. Sister to run it. And it was kind of it was really fun. It was a little stressful, but it was um that was fun. We had a lot of fun that day. For those of you who are interested, there is a link to the live wedding broadcast in the description of this video. So be sure and check that out. Thank you. Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah, I'd love, 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 we'd love for people to watch it, watch our wedding. I think that's fun. Yeah, it was a beautiful, it was a beautiful service. I thought it was very romantic. Thank you. Thank you. It was the alley that we met in. Yep. The exact same place we, we met was the exact same place that we uh, um, got married. That's really cool. So that that was. We had talked about it a lot. Um, we had we go there often for coffee and sit there, and so we had talked about well, this would be you know a fun place to get married, and um, some family things came up with health and. We just were, we just really felt like we needed to go ahead and move things up because we were going to get married in the fall. And so we, uh, and I kind of worked through it together. Kind of threw it together last minute. I mean, I was literally sitting in my car out, out, out in front of this place, freaking out <laughs> like a few minutes a before the, the, the ceremony. I was live on YouTube, uh, live on mobile YouTube. Which I can't do anymore because I I'm not I, I don't have a thousand subscribers anymore yet yes yeah um, I mean how what a bummer I'm so thankful you guys were able to do that then because you're right now yeah. that's the kind of thing that is not very cool about you know, I, that's that's something about YouTube that I'm really that I really dislike is it seems like they constantly are changing things to make it more difficult on the smaller YouTuber and it, it's it's um, I don't get it they've got to have a reason. But they haven't expressed that reason to us at all. So this whole idea of communication has been very bad this year. But um, yeah, I was glad we could do it then. We, uh, I mean, I think the the Friday I took the Friday off before, and we went up and we actually picked up my big wedding dress because it came in, and um, I bought a, a a really pretty dress, simple dress on. Uh, Torrid website, and um, so I wore a different dress. But um, she, we're still having another wedding. Well, we're having, yeah, we're having a probably a renewal of the vows. Um, it's a renewal of the renewal of the vows. Then it'll be somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. like a big barn or something like that. And it's it, it, it it's we have no idea when it'll happen. It's mainly a mainly a money issue i think at this point if we had the money we just hold it but we don't so it being a first year of marriage we've had a lot of um ups and downs with money and stuff like that because both of us handle money differently yeah and um a difference between a marriage and a wedding for sure right there is yeah it's not all about the ceremony right no 
Yeah. No. Yeah. We we've um we've done that. We've needed counseling to do that to come up with budgets and stuff like that. We've come up with our own budget, but we we're like doing the Dan, the Dave Ramsey type of deal, and we're gonna take the Dave Ramsey course. That the, the, they have a new online thing, and we'll probably do that online. Yeah. Um, and, and, and that I would recommend anybody who's getting married or is married and having problems with money that Dave, Dave Ramsey program is amazing. Um, it's designed for couples and, um, or it, not really, for, not really just, it's just designed for, for anyone who wants to make their, have financial peace. And with us, we found that the money was there. It's just, we weren't spending it in the right places. So it, it, that was that was probably been that's probably been one of the toughest things we've gone through in our first year of marriage was finances. Yeah, um, I think most marriages struggle with that. I, my son, my second oldest son, graduated in May from college with a degree but no job, and his fiance as well graduated with no job, and they had a wedding planned in August. Two 21 year old children <laughs> to get married with no, no credit ever mm -hmm. and no job. <laughs> right. Um, but they did it. I mean, thankfully, they both are now. It's, you know, they got married August 4th this past fall. And uh, so they're kind of in the same boat you are. And right. you know, they're renting an apartment and trying to save they have a little 400 square foot studio apartment that they both share wow <laughs> <laughs> there's one drawer in their entire apartment and it's a small utensil drawer in their little alley kitchen nice. <laughs> the drawer in the bathroom there's no linen closet in the whole place the only closet they have is the one in the bedroom <laughs> nice. so when they first well, we, came in all of we, their wedding gift Things are in a storage room in my basement because nice. you know there's no room. Yeah, they registered for pots and pans, and I'm like, oh, you don't even have a cabinet big enough. To hold <laughs> <laughs> that that that's something funny is we 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 uh we're we're gonna do wedding announcements um coming up because we we've been married a year and a lot of family doesn't really wasn't invited, didn't know um and. We're going to have the renewal of vows, but we want to let people know officially that we're married. We never sent out an invitation or anything. So we're going to be doing that rather soon. So um, that'll be fun. We've just got to get some pictures taken. And with the rush before my surgery, I have, I have um, a knee replacement, total knee replacement surgery coming up next uh, Tuesday. So in a week. And I want to talk in steps about that today to bring awareness to other people of what you guys are faced with. And first, before I do that, I want to read Patty's chat yeah. patty said welcome and rick welcome i didn't welcome them at first when we started <laughs> but patty says she is a financial peace coordinator which i don't oh, know cool. exactly what that is yeah um, but she does recommend the dave the dave ramsey and says this is the number one reason for divorce is money challenges you yeah. guys are going to be great in your marriage because you are doing fpu so i yeah. assume that is something that dave financial. Ramsey yeah. Yeah. Financial, Financial Peace, Peace University. University. Yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We we can't wait to do it. And and uh, we, there's not a whole lot of the the of the of the organized ones in the area. Um. So the online one will be better for us too. Plus we're we're online people anyway. Well, we have they have an app that you can get for free. Um. And if you um, subscribe, I think. It's it's just if you it, if you included. subscribe it's included. So um, and they will link your bank account. So it's really good for. We've already plugged in all of our budgeting, and we've been using that for the last I think two months. Um, and part of this is, I mean, we've had this struggle with budgeting and um, spending, and um, like Rick said, the money was there. We just weren't using it where it should go and so it was a struggle even before we got married yeah i think it was a struggle in our relationship and um i mean we both have income coming in and um but we just we weren't being wise with our money and so um it was this thing where we would say every month, I think there would be some type of argument or issue. 
um, something would come up and it, not just Rick, myself too, um, you know, there yeah. would be issues with that. And then um, when I started um, my new position, um, starting in January, I started teaching um, the budgeting class at work for, <laughs> for uh, you know, kids, uh, for young kids and Job Corps and um, people with um, unemployment and then people through Promise Jobs where I work and, and, and people just um, that were interested. In, and I was like, <laughs> I can't teach this class because if I'm not telling, and that's my big thing, you know, if I'm not practicing what I preach to others, you know, show up on time for work and then, you know, I can't be late. So it's the same with budgeting, I feel like. And so I actually, um, we had talked about it and talked about it. Um, and I came home one weekend with, and I think I had just taught the class and I had the sheets printed out and we said, okay, this Sunday we're going to sit down and, and go through things. And, you know, it was, it was pretty stressful. Um, it was a couple yes. hours we sat here at the table and, uh, excuse me, but it was really, it was a good conversation and, you know, what, what we both were thinking as far as, you know, where money should be going and we're pretty much on the same page about oh, things, yeah. um, which is really good. Um, but Rick is, um, they, we, one of the things that I teach in class is that there's a free spirit and there's a geek and Rick's the free spirit and I'm the geek, which I never thought I'd be. And we're both horrible with money. I mean, that's just the reality. The reality, we're horrible um, with money. <laughs> so we're trying to figure out how to do this together and, you know, and, and just, you know, w I think we have more conversations about what we're spending Yeah. Um, because we're not, we haven't exactly, we're kind of trying to follow it, but we're not exactly there yet because some things have, we've we, needed we, we, come up. We, 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 we needed a bed. Our, our our mattress was 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 horrible, so we um, actually had to go out and buy a bed for the surgery because I couldn't get in and out of bed because the mattress was so bad. It's, so we like kind of come kind together, of come and together in the middle of the night, and, oh. and so we actually so we bought a, a good mattress that we bought a cow king from a queen. So we're gonna be like on opposite <laughs> sides of the this gigantic. Uh, I think a mattress is a is a priority. Yeah, no, it has to be any uh, kind of expense when you when you begin it, to live independently. I think it's very important. I think that yeah, important. yeah, sleep is important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you have to have it. <laughs> it's kind of important. I slept. I, I couldn't sleep on it last night. I slept on the couch. So we, we kind of that's that's kind of where that bed is right now. But and that's that's not that important. It's just it it the the thing is 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 we're making strides and decisions that are going to affect us for years to come. And, um, we are, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be doing this with Brooke. I mean, I, I can't imagine doing this with anybody else. Tell me, when did you guys meet? Were you both from the city that you were having coffee together? No. no um, he was living about an hour from here. And I lived in Des Moines. Just so I can preface, I know some of this, but I'm trying to bring yeah, it. Yeah, no, right, you're right. fine. Don't know. Yeah, we got you. Um, so yeah, we um, met online. Kathy, why are you asking us that? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got you. We met online, and um, I sent him a food joke. Um, did you hear about the chef that died? Oh, the, the, yeah. And then he responds like oh mario died he like had an overdose what <laughs> yeah because there's there's a chef out there that we won't get into who has a has a very big uh partying um profile he he uh he has addictions and stuff like that and I, it was this italian chef and like there's this famous italian chef out there that like oh no he's he, he mario died and and, uh, and so, I'm like, no, like no, I'm no, like, no, no, no. no. <laughs> she was he joking. Passed away. He passed away. Pasta. Like passed Pasta. away. So it was. It 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 really um endeared. So it it, it, it's how it started. It, it endeared me to her right away because she was just so um, uh, she was unusual. I mean, if you're if you've ever done the online dating world, which you probably haven't, because you've been married for 26 years. 
it, it is. Night. We did. We had fun with different couples game nights and stuff doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. It is a nightmare to find somebody. And it, it, it's, it's, uh, actually we both were, um, I think done. We were done. We were done. It. And I had had a really pretty, um, interesting experience right prior to meeting Rick, um, with this person. And, uh, basically was trying to get me to, you know, send him money. And I was like, I I'm done. I'm done. And one of my best friends was like, catfish type of relationship. yeah, it was cat, total catfish, yeah. total catfish. And, um, you know, his dying daughter was, you know, it was one of those situations. And so I was like, I'm done. I'm done. This is this. I've been single my, you know, 40 some plus years and I'm done. Like I can't. And a friend encouraged me to just, okay, just do it. At, maybe go to a different site mm -hmm. and just one more time, like put yourself out there. And I'm like, okay. And I had seen Rick's profile and he just seemed different. Um, I'm in not, a good way. I'm not normal. Island. Yeah. And, and I was like, and he, he it's a chef and he liked to cook and, um, and I like to cook and bake. And so I was like, okay, you know, and he just looks, there was something about him. And um, I wanted something to, to get him, to captivate him. And so that's why I was like, I've got to think out of the box. Like I got to do something <laughs> like, you know, not like this, hi, how's it going? You know, I just, I wanted something different to catch his attention. So. And she did. Yep. She did. So we had coffee that Saturday. And, and she kissed me. No, he kissed me <laughs> in the alley. In that same alley you got married in. So, yeah, we've had a lot of firsts in that alley. So, um, we got engaged in that alley. Um, we're actually, just, I'm actually just thinking, a couple years ago, right? When, yeah. when did you meet? Right. Uh, two. Was about it? two years ago. It'll be two years in the fall. Two years in the tears, tears in, in, uh, in uh, August. 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 Right. Well, but these last 10, 11 months of when you've been really getting to know each other because you right. weren't living together prior to this, right? I mean, you you dated and then we you dated. Got married. We then dated, but we we moved in together before we were before we were married. Um, we we did that. That was that that had to happen because of a living situation that I was in ended. And um, we just decided that hey, we're this is serious. We're 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 not going to be um, uh, we're, that we're not going to be apart. Um, why so you, your whole... you two have really only lived together for how long? Two years. Two yeah. years. Right. So I'm well. I mean, so it's so you're still learning. I mean, we're, yeah. We're I had a out. spare bedroom, and we moved. We moved him in there, and. I don't know. It was just, it was kind of a roommate. It was kind of, it was, was kind of awkward at first. Cause it like my stuff came all from one place. It was, it was how everything came together. was really weird. Is um, it in the house you're in now? Yes. Yeah. Move again. Okay. So this, yes. is, this is the area where you're we're, we're same place. And, um, it was kind of weird how it all happened. It was, um, I was going to be moving into another friend's house and that fell apart at the same time. And so it all just came to, came together and kind of the synergy that was really good. Um, and, and, it, and it took a while too. I mean, it, it was, um, I, I have never lived in a town less smaller than Des Moines. Or I had not lived in a town smaller than Des Moines. So moving to Oskaloosa where we live now, um, it, we're about 1200 people. And so I, Des Moines is a, if the whole, you look at the whole metropolitan area of Des Moines, you're about 500,000 people. And then I lit, I grew up in the Los Angeles metropolitan area, which was 37 million people. And so moving here was like a breath of fresh air for me. And, and it was like, I, I was able to go to a coffee shop in the morning and, and have some coffee and get some looks. Get some looks. Now, Brooke, you're from this area, correct? Um, I am not originally from this area. I've but, been here um, prior to meeting Rick for four years, four years three, four years. 
um, my family moved here in 99. So um, I am originally from Missouri and then I lived in Illinois. I've lived in Texas, back to Missouri, back to Illinois, okay. back to Missouri and then back to Illinois and then here. So I've moved back and forth a lot. Um, uh, but yeah, this is my family. Um, it was about, well, it was five or six years ago. Yeah. Six. Keep talking. I'll be right um, back. My, um, can you grab some tissue? Please? Yes, I will. Um, my mother, we moved my mother up from Missouri and um, she was in hospice. And so I was coming over here. Um, we moved her in January and she passed away in May. And we, I was coming over here from Illinois every weekend. So um, I just really felt like I was, I was close to my family anyway. And um, the position came up with the state and my brother had, um, it was in the area, which was pretty rare at that time. And he had, he was always looking for jobs for me um, to be closer. So um, I applied and had an interview and moved within like a month. I had to pack up all my stuff and put it in a storage unit. And um, actually, I we have friends that lived two that used to live two doors down. So I lived with them for a short period of time until I was able to find um, a house. And then um, not this one, but a different one. Okay. And, uh, so, but I was very familiar with the area before I moved here and, um, you know, family. So. Yeah. So, I mean, I know Rick went away for a little bit, but I wanted, I wanted people to realize the things that you guys have had to face not what just normal couples that get married have to face in their first year, but you guys have had to face even more so. So for instance, your brother who gave you away. Yeah. He had, he was either, tell me about what happened to him. Um, so, sorry. Okay. I just wanted to. Oh, okay. Um, so my brother who, um, he, Pretty much raised me from seventh grade. Um, my brother, and my sister-in-law, I call them my mom and dad now. Um, well, I started calling them that in junior high, but anyway, um, about three years ago, um, he was fishing with his oldest daughter, and um, he's diabetic. He um, got a sore on his on his foot; it wouldn't heal. Um, he ended up going to the doctor and. Um, about from from the beginning he's had um many many issues to the point where they had to amputate some toes that wasn't healing um they ended up amputating a little bit of his foot and that wasn't healing and then a year ago we found out we thought actually things were going better for him health wise um and it was a year ago well a couple I think like maybe February mm -hmm. um, is when we found out that his leg wasn't, the doctor said your leg's not healing um, and we're going to need to amputate it. And so that's kind of what, I mean, one of the things that, that kind of led right. us to getting married sooner. Right. It altered your plan. Yeah. Altered our plan somewhat. I mean, it wasn't everything, but a big portion of that was, um, for the fact of, um, you know, he is my only, uh, you know, he's my dad, um, and I wanted him to give me away. Um, I had always wanted him, he's an ordained uh, minister, and I'd always wanted him to to give the, do the ceremony. Um, and he did both. <laughs> he did both. He actually did both. Um, but um, when we found out... Um, we also then found out that he, when he started preparing for the amputation, um, they found out that he needed heart surgery um, and that he needed a, a bypass um, to, to have the amputation. And so, I, I, I mean, we were pretty concerned and not that, I mean, they do this a, a lot, but I think coming back to the beginning, um, when he first had his surgery at one of the hospitals um, 
it was um, not done correctly. Um, and which led to, I think it was a catapult of the many, many issues that he had. Um, I think had it been done correctly, he would have not been in the position that he was at as far as health wise, um, which I think in the end is a blessing because we didn't know about his heart stuff. And, you know, I always tell Rick that I think it was a blessing in disguise to know, um, because I mean, he, he ended up having a triple or quadruple. It was, it was quadruple bypass surgery. Um, so it was pretty, I mean, he was blocked. And so was just shortly after your wedding, because you wanted him to be able to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. act in, in the wedding and then have the surgery. Yep. Then you also had to be caretakers of the children, right? During his recovery. We helped. Um, I mean, we helped out. Um, yeah, I mean, well, quite a bit actually. I, I was kind of, I'm kind of, yeah, it's, I'm kind of drawing a blank with a lot of it because it seemed, it's it, a lot of everything lot, happened so fast. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. You're and just, and, 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 and then there was, then there was the, ed, the education of other children and the, uh, her other, her brothers and sisters um, of what you do when your dad is in the hospital. You, you live in the same town. You go see him every day, or you actually make an effort to go see him at all, because he had a had a had a quadruple bypass surgery. Yeah. So there was a lot of like, okay, we're we're the we're the older group here who's been through this stuff. My mom had had bypass surgery. I actually in the same hospital. In the same, in the same hospital. Mm -hmm. So it was um, she had a lot of surgeries done, and so it was actually like. Um, Okay, this is how you act. <laughs> this is how you're supposed to be, because um, they were just um, kind of clueless on what to do. Some of them didn't go at all, and it was just like I, I couldn't understand how people would not want to go see their their dad in the hospital. It was like there was no there was there was no um, I don't like think sense they really of. There's no sense of urgency because they didn't understand the seriousness, the of, the seriousness. of the situation. Yeah, right. Because I think it's been three years of so many surgeries, so many hospital visits. I mean, it was, I don't know how many surgeries he's ended up having or how many hospital stays that he had over those three years. And so I think it was just that, oh, dad's in the hospital again, you know, not really realizing. And plus when you're younger, you know, a lot of um, the kids are younger, so, uh, you know, Rick and I are older. We kind of... Um, we both uh, lost our parents. Yeah. We, don't, we don't have parents. So yeah. um, that's something that we, we've, um, we have in common, too, is that we've, we've, we've both lost our biological parents at this point. And um, I think a lot of... I'm like, I'm starting to see it with my friends who are starting to for having this are starting to lose their parents and um in in there and there it's like right now it's like well right now it's cancer when we when we were younger it was alcoholism would kill would kill parents um or addictions or something like that you, you lose people but now it's starting to be like the serious stuff like cancer and um heart disease and stuff that's kind of creeping in on people who'd never really took care of themselves at all. Yeah. And um, so I think um, that's something that bonded us together too, be, is that, is that we both had that similar experience. There was no, I mean, we're, we're still going to go through grief in life. There's no, you know, there's no, there's no way around grief. Um, but I think well, that you the experience a lot in your first 10 months. Of your yes. right more right. than what and anybody the, normally would face yeah right. i mean we also had my health issues um i ended up we went on vacation um in august we got back shortly after i started having pain um and ended up needing to have gallbladder surgery um 
and, and still then, to know each other. I mean, you've really only known each other for two years, so yeah. Um, but now you both decided together that counseling is definitely necessary, which oh, yeah. I yeah. want everyone out here who's listening now to realize that counseling is the most beneficial thing any couple could do, especially in their first year of marriage. Yep. Right. So the fact that you two have been through almost losing your father figure, taking on children that aren't really infants, <laughs> no. having financial stress, having health issues, all within these 10 months that you're, that you're trying to get to know each other and build a relationship together. And how much now, when did you start your counseling sessions? Uh, about a month ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's about, been about a month ago. Um, and it's been a helpful. The first, the, the first, the first visit was basically a get to know each other visit. It was a get to know the, the counselor and how that all works. Um, really, that was really just to get to know, no session. And the second one was more, was more, um, in depth because we, we had actually had a, um, it was uh, last week. A, a yeah. conflict last week. It was last week. And um, I had gone on YouTube and declared that we're moving to San Antonio so we could go to the Culinary Institute of America because I, I'm going to culinary school. And um, I didn't really even say anything to her about it. I'm so independent. See, the, the thing with me, I lived al alone or um, functioning on my own for. Um, gosh, at least three or four years where I was on my own. I had to make decisions on my own. I had to make all this stuff. So, and you too. I was on my own. Yeah, she was on her own too. You stay on your own, but can can you be a little bit more specific for the people to can, can get a grasp of what it is that you two are facing? I mean, you weren't you weren't just on your own. You were, were you? Well, I was homeless. Yeah. I was homeless. I was homeless for about. Uh, Excuse me for a minute. I gotta blow my nose. I was I was homeless for about two years. Yeah. I had a, um, uh, a relationship that a relationship of marriage that ended quickly, and I had to get out of it very fast. And in the process of getting out of it very fast, I found out that the savings that I thought was there was not there. Right. So um, I had left with no money. And um, I had ba I had a place to go, but it was in Toronto, Canada. So I had to borrow four hundred and fifty dollars to go to Toronto. And I lived in Toronto for about uh, four or five months, and then moved to the Buffalo area, which is basically two hours away. Moved to Buffalo, New York, where I have family, but my family doesn't didn't really know me. So I was actually living in my car. I was staying at a. Um, and, and I, you know, New York is supposed to be the state where the, where the socialism is great and everybody gets everything taken care of. Well, I'll tell you, that's not true. It's a complete mess. And um, I had mental health issues at the time because of all the stuff that was going on. I had severe mental health issues. I have bipolar disorder, so I wasn't able to get my medication. I was, there were constant trips to the emergency room and I was living out of my car at that time. And I was being fed by the, the grace of God by, um, people who worked in a restaurant and I was able to go in and like, Hey, I actually asked one time I went in because I was getting, I usually would go in for a cup of coffee at about two o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep. And, um, I, I just mentioned that I hadn't eaten in like two days and they brought me food. Wow. So every night I'd go in at two o'clock in the morning and they'd feed me. And then, so I was, I was really, really, really homeless. And, then about, um, I, I found a place to stay for a short period of time, um, and that ended right at Christmas time. So um, at literally Christmas Eve, I, I, I called my aunt and I told my aunt, I'm homeless. I have no, I was trying to hide, hide this from my family. Um, I'm homeless. I have no place to go. I have nothing, nothing at this point. And I borrowed some money from my aunt and I drove back to Des Moines because it's the only place that I've, I had known really. And I, I didn't want to go back to Los Angeles because that's just crazy to, to try to live in LA with being homeless. That's just dangerous. 
and, and and so I found I found a room to live in, and I lived in rooms for a while. And I worked for a hotel that let me let me have a room for a while. And finally, that's when I found the found the the um, place where I lived for two years before I met Brooke. Right. So it was a long process of rebuilding, and it's still a process of rebuilding. I mean, I'm still. I mean, you know, it's 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 like it's it's so strange to get things because for a while I didn't have anything. I was selling everything. And the, and the, the one thing that gets me right now is the only thing I didn't sell is my chef's knives. <laughs> everything else I sold. I had iPads, I had computers, I had all these things that I was using in, in a real estate career. I had a I had a, a great real estate career. Right. And I had to leave that all behind. And when I got back, I couldn't do it because the bills hadn't been paid, nothing had been paid. So I was literally just trying to function and, and get by. And so um, when, when, when Brooke and I met, I, was, I was, had just started to get back on my feet. And um, so that's been a process too. Because, um, I mean, I, I, had, uh, I had sold an Apple Watch and um, my, my wife gave me an Apple Watch. Oh. And um, so I was totally shocked by, by that gift because it, that was precious. That was something that I had before that I didn't have. And slowly, I didn't have a computer. I got a computer with, with money for a student, with, from a student loan, and now I'm on YouTube. The YouTube was the dream for a while because I wanted to be on YouTube. And of course, I didn't know anything about mobile YouTube. I didn't have any idea about that stuff at that time. Really, people weren't doing that at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but I wish I had been vlogging this whole thing because um, it's a story. Mm -hmm. um, it's a story that would have been, well, I'm telling it now. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, 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 I, I wish, I wish I could have recorded it for my own knowledge. I have my memories, which are good, but I wish I'd been able to listen to myself talk and to see myself cry over, um, Hey, I don't know if I'm going to eat tonight or I don't know. Um, I don't know where, uh, I don't know what, where I can sleep tonight. In Buffalo, they they have a, they have a, the Buffalo area. The WalMarts don't do sleep in your car parking. They've stopped doing that. Um, so there was no sleeping there. So I was sleeping in a, in a, in the back of a restaurant in a um, well. First it was a college, and then they wouldn't let me do that. Then it was a um, a truck stop, a cross truck stop, cross car wash slash oil change place. Wow. Living in, living in a uh, a car that was so small that I had, I, I, I have lost basically most of my possessions since that point. So uh, all I was able to keep was what my ex-wife managed to um, maintain. One, one of which things I use daily, I use a cast iron pan. She kept that, thank God, I loved it. It's old, it's, it's something that I like. Thankfully she didn't get rid of that, but there's a lot of stuff that I lost. I have, I have a clock that a grandfather clock that that she managed to not sell she sold all my possessions while i was gone wow. now, so, when you met rick did you know i mean surely you you guys got to know each other before you got married but i mean were the is there anything that they're just learning now in this first 11 months of your marriage no i mean we've always been pretty open and honest about everything and I mean, he told me from the very beginning, um, he told me about uh, his mental health issues in the very, very beginning before we even met. Um, he uh, told me about his ex and what happened. And um, so there wasn't really anything, I think, surprising that I've now found out. Right. I mean, um, there's, there's, there's stuff, there's emotional things that, um, come out where I'll have, true. I, that, that are, um, where I'll just get really emotional over something that's so simple and so s seemingly minute. And Brooke's like, what are you crying for? Is that part of a, the bipolar? No, it's just, it's life, life in general. Well, I think in your very, you're an, emo, I think he's an emotional. Yeah. Things are very um, passionate. I'm, I'm emotional too. I cry um, 
a lot too. Um, but you know, he things trigger for him, and um, I now, think Mike, did you have counseling prior to this? I mean, there was oh, yeah. a time where you were homeless where you weren't able to get your medical. I was, I was actually, I actually got plugged in while I was there. To um, I had a um, believe it or not, in the middle of middle of that, I had a suicide attempt. Wow, wow. and um, I was. And, and that was, uh, I got hooked up with the mental health program in New York, which was quite good. Um, and they were, I was able to receive free mental health care while I was there. So they got me back on my medications, which I couldn't afford. Um, um, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was, it was a bad time. But it, when I, when I got plugged, it started to get plugged into, um, the mental health system in in um, in in Buffalo, it got a lot better. I was able to think straight. I wasn't constantly in the emergency room with problems. I mean, there's seriously, I would go to an emergency room and say, "Hey, I'm out of this, and I haven't taken it in uh, two weeks." And they'd go, "Oh my gosh, you can't not take that drug." Well, tell me how I'm going to pay for that drug. Right. Tell me how I'm going to pay for it. My insurance had been cut off at that that point. I mean, everything, everything had, everything had, had gone crazy. So, um, but we, you know. You're both so incredibly strong. I hope you realize that. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the things that you guys, it's been really, like Rick just in the chat just said pretty intense. Yeah. That, that's an understatement. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I'm so glad that you guys are going to counseling now. And you said you had an argument before your second session. Do you want to share? Oh what yeah, was about? What was it about? You just started saying that you decided on YouTube that you're both going to move and you're going to start. You know, well, yeah, I, it's still out on YouTube. Finalize you your dreams. You want to? Um, so can I? Yes, please. So on Monday, um, and the thing that you need to know about Rick is he's very, um, he's a dreamer. He is passionate. Um, when he does something, he does it all. And I am, and he's spontaneous. I am not, I'm not spontaneous. I want to be, but I can't. It's just <laughs> in me that I just, I like to plan ahead. I like to know things, which he does too. Cause like we did a Valentine's day. I did a, like a surprise. We went to Valentine's day in Des Moines. We had a dinner reservation and I planned it overnight maybe and he didn't know about them, it. Maybe he's not communicating them. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so like that kind of threw him off. So, but that for me was a little spontaneous, but I'm a very detailed, I like, I like to know things. I, I, that's just how I work. And actually our counselor kind of complimented us that, you know, we, that's a good thing for us to be together because I can do the detailed part and he can be, you know, and, and I can reel them back in. And so, sorry, I didn't mean No, that. it's okay. So Monday, um, I, I um, one of the things that we're trying to work on is um, throughout the day is um, like he would text me and I would feel like this urgency to respond. And so kind of limiting that to where we have more quality time throughout during the day, like at, while I'm at work. And so, um, like my thought was I'll call him during my lunch break because I get an hour. And so I called um, on Monday and he starts talking about, um, I don't remember if he had texted me, but, and I was teaching. So Monday I had a class all day. And so I'm on my lunch break and it was at the end because um, I ate and then I called him. And he, anyway, he, <laughs> see, that's the detail of me. I'm just, about, and uh, so anyway, he starts, to, he starts telling me about, you know, uh, that he applied for the, um, the colonies of America. America. And, um, let's, and, you know, basically we're, you know, I want to move to Texas and let's go. And I'm like, I have like, f like two minutes before I have to get to class. And so, I'm not even processing everything. And so he's disappointed because I'm not supportive. And I'm like, you know, what the heck? We're moving? Like, I can't even wrap my head around it. And I've got to go teach. And so that's kind of what started our yeah. week last week. 
And um, then there was, he had posted a video about it and we really, it was. There were a couple videos about that. Yeah. Actually. And it, it, there wasn't a lot of conversation. I felt um, about. I thought I was being open and open and open and about this because I was saying, talking about San Antonio and talking about this stuff. And um, I thought she was going along with it because she sometimes Brooke um, does not express herself openly. She, she Process. holds, she processes it inside, doesn't say anything. So I'm thinking, Hey, this is great. This is going to work out. This is going to be fun. She's going to be supportive. She's going to do this. And all of a sudden it was like, bang, not happening. And I was like, wait a minute. I, I filled out an, I filled out an application. I, I've, I've done an essay. I've, I've done all these things to get into this school. And now, and it's, it's the best culinary school in America. And I wanted that. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah. I wanted that. <coughs> and we're having to make plans differently now because, of course, um, Brooke can't just uproot and move to San Antonio. But that's my – and I still think, gosh, it would be great to move to San Antonio. I've got an account at CIA where I've, I'm, they want me to start sending them, sending them things so that I can get started on my classwork. And I'm like, gosh, I want to do this, but I know that it's not going to happen. Yeah. So it's it's kind of strange, it, even today, to to think that that's not going to work. But, um, but we we talked about that there's a process, and I think for me, um, you know, it's not just going out and getting a job. For me, um, you, you know, I finally job too, right, Brooke. I, I just switched my job. Um, I still work for the state, um, and it's the first time. You didn't say what you did. You're a social worker, correct? Um, I was a social worker for eight years, five with the state of Iowa, and then two years with um, Illinois. But um, now it's my job. I'm more of an, an advisor. Okay. Um, so people who um, are on uh, financial assistance, they have to go through our program. Um, they have their children with them. And well, so welfare for work, yeah. or work for welfare. So we, our job is to get them self-sufficient, get them jobs. And for the first time in probably my whole life, I love my job. Like I love going to work. Um, I feel like I'm making a difference. I feel like I'm able to stay on top of my workload. Um, and I'm not stressed out. Like for the Your first husband calls and says, by the way, we're moving to San Antonio. Yeah. And I'm just like <laughs> freaking out because, you know, just, I remember talking, talking to you that day and you said, are you sure that you have, you need to talk to her about this. <laughs> and, and then that evening we, we had a conversation on her side that she, she had the conversation and I kind of went, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I, yes, I remember sitting back and watching your video and I had this overwhelming sense come over me like, I wonder how Brooke feels about all this. <laughs> so I did. I, I texted you both. I was like, are you guys on the same page here? <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, 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 not at no, all. Not at no. all. And now, now we've come to it. We've come to a conclusion where I'm going to, um, uh, by the way, I see how I just wrote that. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you, Seattle. She's, she's much happier now, not taking kids away from, from parents Yeah, and dealing with drug addiction constantly. Yeah, um, you started out your marriage with a lot, Brooke. Well, well, and I, didn't, off. I mean, yeah, I didn't know Rick who had an extraordinary life five years prior to meeting you. He's gradually finding that he is going to become successful and finally can live his life the way he wants it. Whereas the last year you've been taking on a lot. Yeah. And <laughs> you know? like, so now you both have to, to come back even again. I mean, I'm right, right. going to counseling through all this. And when we first met, so we met um, in August and in, by September, like I said, I had been doing this for, you know, many years and 
um, a coworker went on maternity leave. Um, I, I got burnout. Um, and it was the first time that like, I was making poor decisions. Um, I couldn't function, um, literally at work because I just, I couldn't handle the stress. Um, my caseload, um, we count them per children. I had over 70 kids, um, that I was responsible for to see every month. Um, and, you know, on top of that, writing reports for court, going to court, testifying. Um, and, um, I called in one day and I, I, I had taken a day off. It was for my birthday. For his birthday. Um, I had taken a day, um, a couple, I think maybe two days. And then by the third day, I was like, I need a mental health day. Like, I can't go to work. I can't function. And your father figure was having health issues. You're trying to plan a wedding. You know, you're, I mean, this is, yeah. the job alone is yeah. way too. And, and I didn't realize how, like, Rick, I can't, I can't even imagine what he went through because when you're a social worker, you don't work nine, you know, eight to five, you do, you don't, or eight to four 30. Um, I would work weekends. I would work evenings. Um, there would be an emergency and I'd have to, to call somebody or go see somebody or. It was constant. It, the, the job never, ever ended. It was a, um, it was a gigantic, just mess of drug addiction and, 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 and all the chaos that goes along with drug addiction and mental health issues and, all, and uncontrolled mental health issues, I should say, um, and children who had problem who had physical mental abuse. physical abuse you name it. And some of the cases she was having right at the very beginning um, were like, you, you did what today? Yeah. And I, I hadn't experienced it. So I was like hearing these stories and it's like, okay, what time are you going to be home tonight? I got to cook dinner. I don't know. I don't know. Or Brooke, can you bring it to me to the office or, you know, I'll come home and then I have to go back, you know, and then, um, you know, kind of fast forward, um, towards the end, um, you know, and this, it got, it got to the point where towards the end, and I have been, we had talked about other jobs. Um, it's really, you know, I wanted to keep my benefits. Um, and I had been applying at other, um, places within the state, um, trying to get my name there and get interviews. And I had Few, a few interviews here and there um, along the way. And then um, towards the very end, right before I end up getting um, my new position, um, I, I had um, a, a significant case that the father, I, we had a termination hearing and um, the judge ruled in the favor of the department, which meant these parents lost their rights. But this, this father, was pretty um he had made some threats towards everyone in the case and it was to the point that um the day that you weren't even safe no, no and we actually um we had law enforcement at our office to secure everybody leaving that day um and it got pretty scary. Mm -hmm. um, and for the first time in eight years, I, I think that was the first time, well, second time um, that, but overall big picture that I was actually really afraid um, for my safety, uh, for Rick's safety, for my family. And all, um, on, on, all in all, I, um, <laughs> I like it. it's the other district. That's the yeah. part of my day. I know. I know. <laughs> I own the honor with yeah, it. Yeah. Um, uh, it does know. take a very special person to work in your field. Yeah, it does. And I loved it. I mean, amongst all the chaos and all the, um, all the tears and all the, 
I loved helping. I love the children. Um, and I loved helping the parents and there are parents that I'm still connected with, um, to this day that I have relationships with, um, even from Illinois, um, to here. And I feel like, I mean, there were obviously stake mistakes along the way, but for me, I knew that everything that I did impacted these families for the rest of their lives. And so I tried to make the best decisions um, and not that my decisions were just mine. Um, I, you know, my supervisor, my, um, it, it was a team process. It wasn't just me out on my own, but you know, I, I tried to do the best that I could. Um, and sometimes that was very limited based just on resources and time. Um, I felt like I was just always constantly putting out fires, but you know, I just, I didn't realize the stress that it really put on Rick and I, um, in that position, in that job, in that field. And then, um, the very first day that I started my new job, um, Rick came to town and we went out to dinner and I, that <laughs> evening I had just been off work and I said, I feel like, like a late, a weight has been lifted. I, this is amazing. Like I didn't know. And I knew it was the very first day, but I just knew that things were going to be different. Wow. And it's, and it has been, um, she gets off at four thirty. Four thirty. every day. She mm -hmm. goes to work when she's see, it used to be a big problem to get time off because she had to find people to cover court cases. She had to find people kids. to cover kids. She had to find see. people to, so, so, Getting up to a time where you had time off was, you, she was working, uh, like when she had her gallbladder surgery, just for example, the night before I her gallbladder. You just, I mean, you just had surgery too. Yeah. Well, she, you would see, but she had this gallbladder surgery. She like worked that. until midnight the night before her gallbladder surgery because she had to figure all this stuff out. When was your gallbladder surgery? It just was a couple months ago, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was in the fall. Yeah. Before I started my new job, I, I, I can't believe the two of you are standing or sitting. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, well, he's the little standing. I'm kind of standing. I, I have I, next 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 week. I have knee replacement surgery, so um, she'll be taking care of me. The perfect time. example to say yeah. it's it's okay to not be okay. It's oh, yeah, okay absolutely to stay that way. It yeah. is. It is. And 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 I I think it it really takes uh uh, it takes two strong people to get through what we've been through. There's no, there's no doubt that, um, had it not been Brooke that I, this might not have worked because she's strong and she's, and she's compassionate and she's caring. And I have this, the same qualities. That's all right. No, don't, I didn't mean to hit you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, <laughs> but, um, you we both have obviously to obviously love each other. Yeah, yeah, very you much. You don't have to worry about that. You've got that going for you. I'm Absolutely. so glad that you both have acknowledged that you need professional. You need a middle person. Yeah, yeah. and we've always like I'm so much proactive as far as you know um, counseling, and I've had my own counseling, and um, I think it's good, and I'm a huge advocate for individual couples, you know, family, I think it's just so important to have somebody who can give you a new perspective. And like when we went in there um, Thursday, um, we had just been in a fight that morning and this was about San Antonio and- um, Was that you your know, first fight? Like. No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Married, said 11 months, you know, you never know. And <laughs> no, and um it was good to have her affirm things and just how we work together and um for her to be we actually kind of maybe understood each other a little bit better yeah. after we left that session and um you know, I'm just I'm grateful we had always talked about um, getting pre-counseling, um, pre-marriage counseling, um, the church that we were going to at the Especially time. Especially for the, the budget, the money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it just, they didn't have it. And then 
Um, we looked at um, Rick's church in Des Moines, and then it just didn't work. The time and there's, no, there's no there's no time for it because of her job she had. Yeah, it was it was that was that was really the issue. Is that when do we do this? Yeah. And people aren't you know you can't. It's hard to find counselors who are willing to say I'll meet you at eight o'clock at night after you're done working. Right. They don't do that. They don't work. They work eight to four thirty. And it's nice now that she's. And it's amazing that she can actually get time off from work. So, like this week, for example, you know, I was supposed we were going to go to Missouri for my birthday, and um, actually, yeah, this was yeah, a yeah, real today. Um, and um, you know, it, it's just not a problem. You know, every time I put time off, I've never been denied um, any time off. When I call in sick. That's been amazing because I've been really sick. Um, well, pretty much, last, you know, the last few weeks. months and the last three weeks. And, you know, my boss is so supportive. And not that my former boss wasn't supportive at all because she was very supportive. But it was just a different dynamic because there it's you have to cover court. You have to cover this. You have a report due. And all these stuff are, you know, federal guidelines and not that I don't have work to do now, but it's on a smaller scale and, you know, it's just a very different, different position. And so it's just been really nice. And then with Rick coming in and needing to, uh, or to have his surgery, to be able to have time off for that. And I've had all this time because before I would, I'd be working so much that if I needed a day off, then I already had worked, you know, 80 some hours during the week. Okay. That's an exaggeration, but you know, we would just, I would, I would have to take it. Because time. mentally you're still yeah. there at your job. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So are you going to be going weekly to your counseling sessions? Or uh, probably bi-weekly. 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 Yeah. I think that's probably. Any kind of homework that you want to share or. So the first week um, or the first session, she wanted us to kind of work on a schedule. Um, I think that's just been kind of hard because he's getting ready to have surgery, but, you know, really trying to plan out our day and our evening. Um, a lot of it more so for Rick than me, just because. This is your, a knee, we, we said knee surgery, right? Did we even say that in here for those? Yeah, yeah knee surgery. When is your knee surgery scheduled for? The 16th. Of this month. Of this yeah, month. Next so Tuesday. next Tuesday. Next Tuesday. So and you'll probably see me on YouTube. Well, as soon as I can get able get available and in front of a computer, you'll probably see me doing this again uh, uh, more often. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to come up with things to do after the knee surgery because I am i don't want to be bored. <laughs> I mean, I sometimes I feel bored now and I'm thinking gosh what am I going to do with all my time and um I'm you know it's a, a matter of getting a it's, it's been a matter of getting a mattress and getting a chair that I could get in and out of we have a couch just kind of like she wanted a couch that would hug you as you got into well I can't get out of a hug chair I can't that that's not going to work so we've had to we, we we found a chair, um, a, a Pier One chair that was being sold by if someone was moving for fifty bucks. Beautiful chair. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's a beautiful chair, and I could sit in. Okay. So that that's one of the most important things. Um, but yeah, and, and then I think I think the 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 I think counseling will be a, a little bit easier because we've actually dealt with a, we've dealt with a crisis with our counselor. And seeing the, I'm always skeptical of counselors who can't deal with crisis. And I've been through that, where they where they just want to turn it around to make it all happy and and happy, easy situation or an easier situation to deal with. And being able to go in and see this counselor and actually work through the crisis that day made me have more confidence in the counselor. And that 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 was really important. Yeah, that's great. So most couples, after they've been married a year, they start talking kids. Is there anything like that? Even yes, we've talked, talked about that. We've, we've talked about that, and we're, we're more than talking about it. 
um, we, we've um, we're both we're both high risk for or I, I'm I have some issues and she has some issues because of her age and um, so we're we're the state covers the state covers um, infertility uh, benefits. So we're going to start, we've got to make an appointment and I'm probably going to do it after my surgery to go see the infertility specialist in Des Moines so that we can start the infertility. To me because of you and your social work, I, I'm thinking foster care or adoption because of, yeah. the, you know, being in your field, you know, the need. So I, I'm yeah. a little shocked that you guys just said, well, oh. and that's not off the table. We've done, um, we've actually, I think it was maybe six months, mm -hmm. six or seven months ago. Um, we did the orientation part. We need to go through, um, you know, I am very much supportive of adoption. Mm -hmm. um, I have 10 um, nieces, nephews who are more like siblings for me. Um, and they call, you know, I, I'm sissy. Uh, so we're extremely close. Um, four of them I grew up with. And so I'm really close to those boys and um, um, I'm close to the other kids too, but you know, those four were more. And so um, it's not, I don't think it's off the table for us. Um, we're just trying to figure out what's best, but I've always wanted to have a, a child. Um, and I know that's, I, I don't know. We're, we're just trying to figure out what's going to, you know, God's got, it figured out for us. Um, we just have to figure out what he wants for us. Yep. And I mean, it um, might be, um, you know, we've talked about an older child and, and we know, I think. I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to have a, I, I mean, one of the things that, that gets me is I, I'm, I'm, I'm 40, going to be 47 ish, 47 this year. You're at the age where you can't remember. I, I can't remember. <laughs> I don't know. My birthday's tomorrow, and I'm like, how old will I be? Yeah, I don't even. It's so, it's so I'm, I'm getting to the point where I don't try to keep track anymore just yeah. because simply I don't want to. Um, but you get, to, you get to that point where you're starting to think, well, I want to be active with my child. Mm -hmm. I want to be, um, you know, there when they graduate from high school and not be like, you know, oh, I've got to sit in the handicapped seating because I can't climb the bleacher stairs. Yeah. How and, old are you guys? Well, I'm I, I think I'm gonna be 46 and I think she's today I'm 43. Today she's 43. Tomorrow. Tomorrow she'll be 44. So you'll be fine. I had Jesse when I was 40, so yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, I mean my my family, they they have six yeah. at home still that are all under 16. Um, and so, you know, I mean, seeing my, my brother, and my sister-in-law that in their fifties and I mean, they're in their yeah middle fifties. I mean, Alien it's says, it, hold on to your sense of humor along with your faith. It's the only way to survive this life. Absolutely. Yay. All yep. of them. Thank you, alien. Can we provide hope for anyone who might be watching and, and tell us about your faith? Um, well, we, we're, we're in the middle of, our, our faith is strong. We, we both have strong Christian backgrounds. Um, I grew up in church, but I never really discovered uh, Christ and a personal relationship with Christ until I was older. Um, Brooke, I, I think, oh, I can. You, go ahead. So for me, um, grew up in church. Um, I went to Catholic school. Well, you went to Catholic school too. Yeah. Um, went to Catholic school, um, went to Methodist church on the weekends with my grandparents. Um, and then um, when I ended up moving in with, I went to a Catholic church for a period of time when I went to Texas to live with my dad. And then when I moved in with my brother and my sister-in-law, um, he was actually in ministry in, uh, Bible, Bible college and, um, trying to be a minister. Actually, he was a minister. He had a very small church and then, um, we moved to Illinois so he could, um, be, a, um, back to, or go on to seminary, um, at a college in, um, Illinois Bible college. And so I grew up 
kind of as a preacher's kid, I say, I say preacher's kid sister, but um, preacher's kid, um, we lived in, I lived in a parsonage. Um, I went to church camp every summer in Missouri and Illinois and um, toured on a music, um, uh, with a music group in a, for two weeks um, at a Bible, uh, at the Bible college that Steve, yeah, Steve went to in Missouri. And um, I had wanted to go to, um, to Bible college in Missouri where Steve had went. And then I ended up going to the seminary that, or the college that he went to with the seminary that was about an hour from home. And so um, I've worked in church, Rick's worked in church. Mm -hmm. um, I've done administrative assistant um, stuff and- um, we've I, was, I was actually a chef at a church. That was one of my jobs. Uh, the, the, the church was uh, Christ Church of the Valley in, in uh, Peoria, Illinois. And it's about, they, they have a, it's a mega church and they, they have uh, generally between 10 and 20,000 people depending on the weekend that come over the three days that they have services. And they had a full food service, full food service operation, a full Starbucks. Uh, we did, we did um, easily 10, $10 dollars worth of business each weekend out of a, out of a, um, we sold everything from pizzas to everything else. But that's what my role was um, at the church. Um, but it was, it, um, I think I, I think after I did that, I needed a break from church. <laughs> oh. It was it was it was a heavy experience because um, both in a church together now. Yes, we are. We are. We're 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 in the process of finding our own church. Uh -huh. um, she had a church that she went to, and um, I had a church that I went to. My church was in Des Moines, and her church was in Ottumwa, and I've never been. A real big fan of the church in Ottumwa. Not that I hated it, not that I didn't like it, but I felt that we needed to find one that was ours. And I think, well, so we did go through a period of time where we were trying to find our church and we struggled with that. Um, it just, you know, church shopping is difficult. I know there's no perfect church. Um, Rick knows there's no perfect yeah. church. And then we went back to the church that um, that I was initially I'd been going to, um, and I think over a period of time, Rick just has never felt like he felt like it was more. I think can I say that that it was more mm -hmm. me, um, and so we're. Um, we have a church in mind that we're going to be, I think, going to going and to. seeing if that's a fit for us. And it, actually, I went to it. Um, my family had gone there for several years, and they're at a different church now. We, we visit. We visited that church, and I felt immediately drawn to it. And it was it was uh, it was a great experience for me to there, and I felt called there. And we went to a marriage conference there. Um, in January or February. Yeah, January. It was one of those um, months. It was um, EXO conference. Yeah. Um, and so it was really, um, I think it was a good yeah. um, experience that we had there. And um, so yeah. things have changed a little bit. Um, but yeah. So. We're, 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 we're doing stuff. When, when we're not going to church, we're doing church online. And you, you actually had church online this weekend, and we attended there. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we attended the church of Bottle Caps. <laughs> Bottle Caps just came in. If you want to say hi to Bottle Caps, he says he's going to hey, run. Bottle Caps. He had a video. Was dirt bike racing right by the front door of our local church? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> Well, I don't know if you're gonna burn in hell. By, I don't know if you're gonna by my church. I don't know if you're gonna burn in hell for that bottle bottle cast, but some of the other stuff you do, man. Oh my gosh, I, yeah, I don't I even. That's the thing that you have to worry about, bottle cast. No, no, I don't think there's anything to worry about. <laughs> yeah, well, and, you guys, I think I've, I think this is your record for staying online. 
<laughs> you know, I used to, I used to be a um, hour, an hour, uh, a an morning hour, man. hour, an hour man. I do the hour, and um, then I got to the point where I was, um, you know, I had it, you know, when, when I first started live streaming. Live streaming was the first. That was like no one was doing it, and James taught me how to do a Google Hangout. James Cox, so uh, on his shows we were on, and he taught me how to do it. So the very next morning I went out and did it, and I had forty some odd people in my chat. Yeah. It went nuts. Yeah. So and then I had some pretty successful live chats after that, and I was doing them every morning, and I burned myself yeah, out. I, I think it was because I mean, well, for one. You look fantastic, by the way. How much weight have you lost? Uh, gosh, I don't know. Um, oh, probably at least twenty-five pounds. Well, you were having trouble sitting. So that that yeah. caused some issues with you. Then you were having other health issues, and you stopped um, your nicotine addiction. Yeah. You know, so I don't think it was that you burnt yourself out. I just think look at the last things you've done in the last yeah. like, eight months. It's true. I think that's what it was. So and I'm sure. hard on yourself. You'll probably get those forty people back. When and I, I, I'm still I'm still trying to do the show. I'm still going out there and doing 30 minutes and trying to get that done. But yeah. that sometimes that's that's a that's a a, a challenge too. So yeah. we'll see. I, I think the two of you've got a really bright year ahead of you. I, I thank think you. you. Thank you. Been through a lot of trials. You're conquering them. You're going through counseling right now. You know, I know that you had a big dream and you felt like Brooke may have just smashed it, but I don't think that's the case. And I oh, no, no, no. Like that now. I think it's all going to. Yeah. You know, gonna, I, I have it's another. Not happen tomorrow, right? You're not just going to pack your bags and sell the house. I have another culinary school I've already picked. You did? I did. I've already picked it. It's in a, it's in a time while I was it's only two hours from here. And oh. they're modeling their, their half program hour. right half hour from here. Half hour from here. And um, uh, it'll work. It's gonna work, and I can. I found out that I can also take classes at the school that I wanted to go to, in and in addition to what I'm gonna be taking there. So the stuff that I want to get out of, that I wanted to get, out of, they have a Latin kitchen at, at San Antonio that's amazing, and that's what I really was interested in. That that I've been through culinary school before. It's just that I haven't been in the business for a while, and so I need to re. You obviously, have quite a resume on your back. So right, yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's going to be fun. I, I I could see myself doing really well there. So I'm uh, happy about that. Help, that. That will help your self respect. That'll help your self accomplishment. Right. I mean, you've been you've been home for a while. Mm -hmm. You haven't been able to do anything, like you said. And so the fact that you have just an outlet now to do the things that you're good at, the things that you're called yeah. to do, I think is really going to help. Well, and even with that, I mean, you know, that's Rick is. From the time that I met him, it was day one. He talked about YouTube and vlogging and uh, Ben Gravy. And I was like, I have no idea what you're even talking about. And um, so, you know, he really kind of sold me on YouTube. And um, we talked a lot, we've talked a lot about, I mean, I remember him just kind of just telling me statistics like I was like who is this you know like this is amazing this can really uh fly um and so when he's building his channel and going through the process I think um you know he's done well with the coffee talk but um we're, we're working on thing, a, we're working on a new channel um and one thing that we talked about I mean I've always I guess for me, um, I used to be really nervous about coming on or talking and, you know, where do I look and where do I speak? And um, I, I have to watch <laughs> I'm really watching that. And um, so one of the things that, you know, Rick, the other night we had talked about was, well, I just, he had said, I wish you just had that same, you know, excitement about youtube that i have and I relate there my husband wants nothing to do with yeah it. and and it wasn't that i'm not excited about youtube it's just i didn't want to be i don't want to be on every single night like that's kind of what 
And so he's like, well, what do we have in common? And I was like, I don't know, coffee. And then <laughs> and he's like, okay, well, we can do this coffee thing where we try, try different coffees. And I was like, oh yeah, we've got a whole bunch of coffees that my brother gave us for Christmas. He's like, no, like, you know, other caught like good coffees. And I'm like, okay. And I'm, I wasn't feeling it. And I, and I was just sitting there and I was like, food, we have food that I love to cook. I love to bake. Um, Rick, she's, she's award winning. She, she has won um, how many two. years, two years in a row, two years in a row, this thing called divas dish that's in a Tumwa. And, um, uh, She's won the dessert category and the main entree category. One I had something to do with. The first one she did all on her own, and I don't know how she did it. <laughs> to be honest with you, I look at it today and go, "Oh my gosh, how did you get manage that?" But um, she did it on her own. First time. First time doing it on, on one day's notice. No, it wasn't one day's notice. Okay, well, you, but, not very much notice. Well. But I think it was. I'd never been in a cooking contest. I've never. I, I didn't really know what I was getting into. And so anyway, all that to say is um, We've, we have talked. I mean, it was just like, oh, and Rick had already kind of talked about um, doing this channel before. Um, and so it was one of these things where we're just like, this is something that we could really do. And can I tell them about yeah, last night? Yeah. So. I'm off today and one of my priorities has been cleaning the, our bedroom so we could get ready for our mattress. And um, so we're posting these things on Instagram, just pictures that we've taken, food that we've made, pizzas, um, desserts. And so I'm posting this thing on Instagram last night. And what has he won? Oh, those, are, those are James Beard award-winning pastry chef that complimented some of her stuff and i it's flipped funny. out <laughs> i'm like i go I, I couldn't even say it i was like he's won a james beard award like this is a big deal like yeah my innards were like screaming he's, he's like, someone he's someone we actually looked up and he's like oh yeah i know who this guy is yeah yeah and, and so and, and he, it, it was like, wow, like and and she's just talented she's she's a, she's just she's talented in baking she 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 makes an incredible pizza and um do you I mean, really want to start a new channel or do you want to just revise this no one? we're we're doing a new channel i i the the, the the corner life network the corner life network coffee talk with rick well it's going to go back to being the corner life network or the corn okay. life. or the corn life or something along that line Okay. Because um, I think that it confused a lot of people when I changed that. It was kind of a change. And I'm waiting for YouTube to allow me to change it back, which is going to happen. It'll, it'll, it's, it'll happen. But um, I'll, that, that will be the outlet channel where I actually go and just do what, I, do what we're doing right here. And the, the what we're planning for the thing is where there's a kitchen, there's a commercial kitchen that's available about – well, it's been a time one <laughs> about about it's a, the next biggest city here, and um, for twenty five dollars, twenty five dollars we can rent the kitchen for the day. And they have GoPros all set up. They, I mean, it is it's it's, it's all a, it's all set up to do production. Oh, so wow. I can go in and film all this stuff, yeah. and we can do like four shows in one day, and I've got a month worth of weekly shows. Mm -hmm. oh. Really exciting. Oh, yeah. And we had talked about it. We had seen it. And um, one thing that we had talked about a year ago is, you know, um, when we were doing the coffee, when we were having our, I think we were on more. Yeah. Um, and, but we had talked about getting like a um, island in here and doing like videos here. And so that's still going to happen. And that's still going to happen. We're still going to do that. Um, but I, I don't know. It was one of those things where we're just like, we've already talked about this stuff in the past and it's just kind of come together. And I mean, we were really like, we stayed up till three 30 last night, just posting pictures and, um, just really getting excited about like, you we, went, know. we went from, let's see, I'm going to look real quick. Um, we went from, uh, no followers last night. 
No, I, we had three or four. Yeah, there wasn't very many. And I think one was me. And we now have 49. Which is, you what know, is just, the name of the channel? I don't know about it. It is, it is Food Frantic. And put it it's, in the it, chat. Okay. Yeah, put, if you can get that. And yep, then I'll, I'll make sure that I add it in the description of this video as well. Yep, Food Frantic. So you started this mm -hmm. last night and you have 49 followers. You guys didn't even tell me about it. <laughs> it kind of, well, he well, already had it. I already had it. It was set um, up, but it was not, I hadn't been doing anything with it. It had some pictures that I took in a, it took in a photography class of some food stuff. And it's Food Frantic uh, underscore, underscore TV. TV. So, I haven't put it in there yet. It's 52 people yet? Yeah. Or 52 people. Yeah. Awesome. But there's food that we've done in our home. Um, that we've just done right. Food frantic under with no space underscore TV. And this is your channel. Yep, this is all stuff we've done. Some of it's food that we've actually. Did you? It's not coming. Oh, up. We're on, on Instagram. Oh, it's on Instagram. Instagram. I thought it was on YouTube. Oh. Oh, okay. Not yet. Sorry, I wasn't listening very good then, was I? Uh, that that's okay. We probably weren't communicating very well. Let's we'll, we'll claim responsibility for this one. <laughs> so you just sent it to me. Okay, cool. I just right. text you. That's cool, and then so I will definitely follow that. Um, okay. So you can so some of these are, Instagram too. Yeah, some of these are pictures that we've um, either food that we've cooked or food that we've um, taken. Pictures that we've taken. When I get off of here, I will, I will do that. I'll, I'll make yeah. sure the link to the Instagram link is in the description. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And we're having like, it's just been really like, we were laying oh, in bed. Coat. <laughs> yeah, we were, <laughs> we were laying in bed and um, our phones like start lighting up. And it's like the people are liking like, Pretty and not just people too, like, like real, like really, like food service companies, and we're like, this is crazy. Yeah, and, and you know how Instagram is is the more followers you end up, you getting get restaurant deals. That'd be fantastic to have some sort of deal with a rest with, with a food service corporation to get free food. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's for both of you. That sounds like it's a it's a definitely good happy medium well, for both of you to do together. That's what we wanted. Well, I wanted something to do together because coffee talk was mine. That's kind of what it was. And um, she kind of came in on the, in the middle of that. And uh, now we've got something to do together, which is fantastic. We, we'll still do coffee talk together too. And as Bob has said with the nine millimeter, uh -huh. I, always, I always have my nine millimeter, my, my nine millimeter handgun for, for uh, bottle caps on the table, so bottle caps can be happy with my firearm because he's in Canada and he can't have a firearm, but he can have all the marijuana he wants, but he can't have a firearm. <laughs> well, I think it's great that you found something together. My husband and I have been married 27 years and we still don't know what we have in common. <laughs> <laughs> we have well, kids, we have kids in common. <laughs> that, well, that's good enough. That's good enough. <laughs> no, we, we. We have a lot in common. We both love sports. We both, we both love each other. We have each yeah. other in common. <laughs> well, that's 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 good enough. That's good enough because yeah. I love Brooke and I, she's enough. I love you. So, oh. <laughs> well, I've enjoyed having you guys on my show today. I don't want to keep you guys too much longer because we have gone over an hour actually, and usually I've been trying to keep mine at an hour, but oh, I wow. mine has flown by. <laughs> it has. It has it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. And I'd love to have you guys on again. And I hope that you guys will have me on your show. We, oh, yeah. We, oh, definitely. Oh, I've yeah. had you on my show before, Kathy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do it again. Again. We, we, can have, we can have you again. We're going to do uh, Thursday nights. Thursday nights, we're going to do a show. Every Thursday night, we're going to have some, we're, we're going to have a coffee talk with Brooke and Rick. Oh, great. Yeah. So starting, at, starting at 8 o'clock Central. And it'll be an hour, and um, that way you can you can um, uh, 
do you you could you could put Jesse to bed at nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll be I'll be able to do more evening time. And last summer I had so much fun interacting with the YouTubers. Yeah. yeah. Summer uh, yeah. when when I don't have to work and Jesse doesn't have to work, we 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 get to stay up a little bit later. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That'll be coming. And we've had a very very busy season this last three months with volleyball, and that's coming. Oh yeah. Next weekend, so we won't be having practices in the evening anymore either. So. Yeah. That's been tying up a lot of my time lately. Yeah. Well, our goal is to uh, come to St. Louis and be the Cardinals, and we'd love to connect with you and see you in person. Again. Hi, and it was actually a couple days ago. It was a year. I saw the picture on my phone. It was, had been a year since we met you. Oh, my God. So, it was my birthday last year. It was yeah. a birthday last year. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So we went down there. That's awesome. You guys are great. I'm I'm happy we've connected. It's been a great friendship for me. Yeah. It has been. Me too. Us too. Us too. We just we adore you, Kathy. We do. Oh, thanks. I, do. I really want you guys to meet my husband. Yes. I'd love, we'd like yes, to. Yes, we'd love to. We'd love that to. That would be amazing. Yeah. I talk about you guys. He 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 does feel like you know, and I know I always tell him most of my YouTube friends and interactions know you. He just yeah. is not a camera guy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he. I, I remember. I remember his night on Pusha Studios. Yeah, that was so much fun for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. That's and awesome. He. He. He was. He. He grinded through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Once you. Once you get him talking and sitting. Oh, he was. Yeah, he I was, was like, he is chatty, Kathy, he's, and he's funny. Unintended, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. No. Yeah. He talks more than I do in general all the time. I'm very. I'm more of a listener. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you do pretty good for this show. You did a lot of talking. So <laughs> you did a lot of talking for this show. So, and yeah. you do a great show. This th this is one of my favorite shows. I catch it on replay a lot, and I haven't. I don't watch a, all of it, but I catch some of it, and it's it's a lot of fun. Um, you're you with what you're doing with this is you're bringing. It's kind of. Uh, it's 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 a daytime daytime slash nighttime slash whenever you do it, but it is real talk. Mm -hmm. It's not a it's not. Um, yeah, it's definitely it's, fulfilled a void for me. I've enjoyed yeah. it. Good. So. Well, you're doing great. Yeah, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed it, and I've loved having you guys on. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up. If you guys yeah. are interested in a talk. Hit me up, and my Twitter link is down below in the description. And thank you, Rook and Brooke. Rook, thank you, Brooke. <laughs> you, guys that you came up with your your name put together. Yes. Thank you, Rick and Brooke. And if you guys stay on for just a second, I'll give you an official goodbye after I end. Sure. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everyone in the chat. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.